Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to talk about another AWS serverless feature and that is AWS SQS. In today's video, I'm going to first explain what is SQS and its advantage. Then I'm going to go ahead and create a SQS queue using AWS Management Console. And then I'm going to use C Sharp to create a Lambda function which will be connected to the SQS queue to receive message and just print it out. So first let's discuss what is AWS SQS. AWS SQS or simple queue service is a fully managed serverless queuing service provided by AWS. SQS provides two types of message queues. One is a standard queue and second one is a FIFO. The standard queue provide best effort ordering, meaning it is not guaranteed that the messages will be delivered in the same order in which they were entered, but it will do the best effort to ensure that. And at least one message is delivered with the maximum throughput which means there might be a situation where you might get the same message multiple times. And for FIFO, as the name suggests, it is fast in, fast out, and it guarantees the order of the message. Next, let's find out what are the advantages of using SQS. So the first advantage, of course, just like any other serverless feature, there is no administrative overhead as AWS manages everything. The second advantage is SQS provide out of box server side encryption should we need to secure communication across different services. And then thirdly, SQS automatically scales out based on the demand. And finally, SQS provides a reliable delivery of messages irrespective of the load. So these four are very critical and are the key advantages of using SQS. Now let us go to the AWS console and create a queue. So just like any other feature, we can type SQS here. And if we type SQS, it's going to end up showing this Amazon SQS, this default dashboard, and we can expand this, go to the queues. Right now, I don't have any queues, so I can click on this button here or here to create a queue. And then once we come here, we have two options to select from. One is standard, one is FIFO. And as I already explained what is standard versus what is FIFO, I'm going to go with default standard. The reason for that is FIFO is more expensive compared to standard because it guarantees the message ordering. Now I'm going to give a queue here and I'm going to say demo queue. It's my queue. Now in the configuration, there are few configuration that we can set. The things that will come handy are delivery delay, which is essentially if you want to delay the message to be delivered to the consumer and it is zero seconds to 15 minutes, then receive message wait time is the maximum amount of time that polling will wait for message to become available to receive. Now, when it comes to SQS, just like any other serverless feature, it Usually you use HTTP to get the message from the queue and you have to implement polling. Though if you are using serverless feature like Lambda with SQS, you don't have to do that. And that is something I'm going to show in today's video. This is the message retention period. It is how many days or hours or minutes the message has to be retained. And for our example here, I'm just going to keep it as one hour. That's good enough. Maximum message size is the maximum size of the message by default is set to 256 KB the range is between 1 KB to 256 KB now this is something very critical to keep in mind because if you have a message size bigger than this then you have a couple of options one option is not to use SQS use some other queuing mechanism like RabbitMQ but if you use RabbitMQ then you will have to worry about even if you use the managed RabbitMQ still you have to worry about managing capacity and providing enough capacity and things like that which is not the case for SQS. SQS is very handy when it comes to get elastic scaling. And if you want to use SQS and you have a message more than 256 KB, the solution is to keep the message payload in something like S3, which is a distributed file system in AWS. And then you can keep the reference to the S3 payload into your message. 
so that way you will never go beyond 256 kb and the last thing is something which is the visibility timeout which we probably will not use often visibility timeout sets the length of time that a message received from a queue by one consumer will not be visible to other message consumers so essentially if a message until this timeout the message in the queue will not be visible to other consumer so 30 second is a good enough if a processor takes more than 30 second to process a message this is something to keep in mind you can either increase the visibility timeout or you can acknowledge the message and continue processing asynchronously it's totally up to you how you want to use it in terms of access policy i'm just going to keep default behavior which is basic and then we have the encryption option which i mentioned earlier this is an option where you can enable server side encryption i'm not going to use it dead letter queue is another feature where if messages are undelivered they will be sent to dead letter queue this is another design pattern which is used with using queuing so you can use that i'm not going to use it and finally tags just like any other aws services tags can be used to identify an application so i'm going to click on create queue and after the queue is created you can see there is an option called lambda triggers and this is where we will configure our lambda to be triggered when a message is sent to this queue now to do that first let's create a lambda function and for creating lambda function I'm going to use the dot net command and I'm going to use this command which is dot net new lambda dot sqs is the name of the template then I'm going to use and in my first video about lambda I have discussed how to use a template if you have not watched the video I'll strongly suggest you watch it I'll provide the link to the video in the description now here I use lambda dot sqs as a template name and then the name of the application is going to be sqs demo I am going to create this and now this particular lambda is created I'm going to open visual studio and open this particular project and as I have shown last time inside of the folder by default source and test two folders are created source contains the source code and test contains the test for the particular lambda and now I open the project and it comes with a default function and here the function has this function handler which takes an object of SQS event and lambda context just like before and then for every record which comes from the SQS event it is just calling process message which is a private function in the process message it is just logging process message and message body that's about it it's not doing anything fancy here and I'm going to keep the implementation as is as this is good enough to show how it is going to work now the new get package that are installed automatically is one is lambda core one is system.text.json for serialization and this is something we discussed in the couple of previous videos and then amazon.lambda.sqs event which is what is used for SQS integration so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this project and then I'm going to go ahead and deploy this function in AWS for that I'm going to go into SQS demo slash source slash SQS demo and then here I'm going to run this command dot net lambda deploy function and for the function name I'm going to provide SQS test function one thing I'll do is in the JSON file I'm just going to provide my profile which is and region is US is to so let me provide this to you next thing now I'm going to execute this command and here it is asking me to select the role and I'm going to go ahead and select the lambda demo role this is a role which I created in my first video which has pretty much access to most of the features that we are going to use in this video series so now the new lambda function is created if I go here now if I want to add I'll click on configure lambda function trigger here or here once I go there I'll be able to select from the drop down the existing lambda function and you can see I see my new test is QS function so I'm going to save this now once we send a message to this particular queue this lambda will be triggered and this lambda should be able to print this message so first let me go to the 
lambda and I'm going to open in a new window and here we see our new lambda function and in the monitor I can directly go into the CloudWatch logs and of course CloudWatch log is missing now because the lambda function has not run yet so I'm going to keep it here now let's go back to the SQS and here I'm going to click on send receives message and I'm going to send a new message hello from SQS and let's send the message and then now if I go here and I refresh I can see the log is created for the SQS test function and if I click on the log I can see a log is created right now and if I go here I can see processed message hello from SQS and I can see that this lambda received a message from the SQS and it is able to print it so you can see how easily we can configure SQS and connect it to lambda for handling the message now question is what scenario we are going to use it well for any distributed application if we want to achieve decoupling we can do that through SQS and then next to process this message to do something we can write a lambda so essentially a message will be published to SQS and that message can be published from one lambda and then another lambda it's going to go into SQS SQS is going to deliver it to another lambda and that is going to process and submit this so if we want to show that what we can do is we can open up one of the previous project the lambda project that I did which is to call message from through API gateway and through that if we send a message to the SQS that message will be picked up by SQS then it will submit it to this lambda and this lambda will be triggered so let's try doing that so this is the function lambda function which I had this is the lambda function which is used for getting data from DynamoDB if you remember so here what we can do is again we can add the NuGet package for SQS the SQS client so if I run I see the AWS SDK.SQS that is what we will need to publish a message to the queue so I'm going to go ahead and install it and once installed what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the demo function and here I'm going to first create a SQS client and it is part of the amazon.sqs namespace and then what we can do is we can create a request message so var message is equal to new of send message request and it's part of the amazon.sqs.model namespace so we're going to create this and then here for the queue URL there are two ways to do it one way is you can copy paste the queue URL from here so if you go to the queue this is the URL which you can copy and paste or you can get the queue URL using a method but usually this URL is pretty standard it's SQS then the region which is US is 2 in our case and then Amazon AWS and then this is the account number and then the name of the queue so I'm just going to go ahead and do this and then for message body here I can send hello from lambda with and here I can pass the incoming name if it is there otherwise it's going to be empty so this is the message so we have the message ready and then what we can do is we can say SQS client dot send message and this is an async so we'll do await and here we can send the message request so this is the message and that's about it so now this is ready and this is part of the lambda demo lambda function so I'm going to go here to see lambda demo and then I'm going to deploy this function from here I'm going to give the lambda demo name so this should update the existing function let me rebuild the function once okay now try to deploy it again and we can see that it has updated code of the existing lambda demo and now if we go inside we can see just got updated eight seconds before now to test this let's go back to the API 
gateway so open in a new window and then let's go to test api and this is part of the get so we can click on the get and we can just test it from here instead of going through the url or we can create a stage and do it i'm just going to go through this and again i have a video on api gateway so if you want you can look into that so let's click on test and it is executing the lambda and we can see the response came back so now if we go into the log we can see another log got created this is the latest log and if i click on this we can see that process message hello from lambda with no name because we did not send any name so the default no name was sent and then it processed so now we saw that we can create an api which will trigger a lambda that lambda is going to trigger a message to send it to sqs queue and then after the message comes to the sqs queue that message can be transferred to another lambda function in this case this lambda which will handle this message and do some processing so as you can see quite easily using three of the serverless features you can create an API which can communicate to other reactive microservices through SQS and Lambda. So that's all I wanted to cover for today. With this video, we can show how we can very easily use SQS with Lambda, both for publishing as well as receiving message. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel and if you think you are going to get value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.